Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome to another special post fight episode, Pound for Count Boxing Report. We rarely do these things, but we're doing them twice in a week, so that lets you know something how important these fights are. Tuesday morning, uh, Bo uh, joined me along with some folks to talk of uh, Yamanaka Neri, Luis Neri's four, four round knockout of uh, Shinzuki Yamanaka over Japan. Doing another episode. In light of what we just saw, Terrence Bud Crawford, Terrence effing Bud Crawford, ladies and gentlemen, took apart, destroyed Julius and Dungo in three rounds, put him down in round two with the overhand left behind the ear. Beautiful, beautiful body shot right in the pit of the stomach in round three. Undungo was down, could not get up. It's wow. As impressive as I was with Miri and the way he took out Suzuki Yamanaka, uh, this was next level here. This was next level. Unification bout. Terrence Crawford is now the unified, undisputed, however you want to call it, junior world, world, world champion of the world, and all four belts. That was something. Uh, joining me on the show this evening, um, Daniel from the Inscriber, uh, Scorsese, you actually see his face this time, uh, both from Truth and Facts. Um, and new to the show, new to the show, uh, Brother Dawu, what's going on, gentlemen? What's going on, fellas? Taking it easy, man. Yep. Uh, somebody dropped off there. Mike. Mike, oh, yeah, Mike, Mike Boyce. Yeah. He might have, might have a bad connection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to see what's up with him, him and his connection. Um, since you are new to the show, Dawu, um, give you the opportunity right now to uh, your analysis, your breakdown of, of what we just saw. Um, uh, uh, what was that the most, was that the most impressive performance so far in 2017? Um, yeah, okay. I'm going to play devil's advocate here a little bit. With Julius and Dongo, he came into the picture in six months. He did a lot very fast. So in a way, I guess... It's a it's a little bit of room for skepticism because you kind of don't really know how good and dongo really is. But when you separate that of it, that part of it, and you just look at like he's a bigger guy, he's a longer guy. That's the first time we've seen Bud in that situation, and the way he disposed of him. But not only that, he disposed of two gold medalists and every other good fighter in in a you know in a division on his way there. So if you look at it as, you know, him just putting the icing on the cake, man, that was, like, amazing because you look at it and, like, he's head and shoulders better than everybody in his weight division. Like, he's more dominant than anybody in boxing right now. And then he just put the lid on it with a third-round stoppage to the body. I mean, what, what, I mean, you, what, how are you going to ask somebody for more than that? You going to ask a fighter for more than that, seriously? So with that win, man, I mean – it's kind of hard not to put him past Andre Ward. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about <laughs> where uh, Bud hard. Crawford ranks. We're going to talk about that in the bit where he ranks pound for pound. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave my answer to that. I'll go to you. I, I'll go to you, Scorsese, and you can follow up both. Um, your thoughts? Um, we all felt on the show Thursday that that Bud Crawford would win. Um, but did you expect that? Did you did you expect for him to just body him in the way he did? Man, um, look look like this. I want to pick up where Dawood left off um, with the pound for pound thing. I think we saw something similar to what Andre Ward faced in Kovalev, but Kovalev is a little more proven. But what we saw is neither one of them really respect distance, like Kovalev nor. Um, nor my man Dango respect distance. They fall in. They they make a lot of mistakes to land those long punches. They don't want to be close to you. And what Crawford done different than than uh, Andre Ward is he didn't he didn't shoulder in and try to say, okay, I see your mistake. I'm gonna get close to you and work. Crawford worked this counter sort of long. Like my boy was coming in with the with the long left hand, and Crawford would just. Boom, you know, long ass counter shots to the body. And I'm thinking to myself, like, like I told somebody about Crawford, it ain't fun. It ain't the most fun, exciting thing, but it's a Miss America pageant. Everybody clap every now and then when the right answer come out. And that's the right answer. Like, it's, it's this dude, 
Man, yes, to Mike's question, yes, I believed he could get him out of there quick. It's Terrence Crawford. He shows he got pound for pound power. He done moved up in weight. People seem to forget that. And he still done knocked down every champion that the man ever fought at that weight class. He done dropped their ass at least once. Post star dropped three times. My dude here dropped twice. My dude, um, dude Sean Porter pulled out the fight from. I don't even know if he won. Uh, no, nah, that's that's he fights next week. Can't remember his name right now. Um former um Robert uh Delorme. He's talking about Delorme. Thomas Delorme. Delorme. Yeah, Thomas Delorme. I think yeah. he dropped him twice before he stopped him. So I mean, Terrence, man, this this dude, man, he's a problem. I don't I don't want to see the move up in weight with this boxing as young as it is right now. But Mikey Garcia, uh Relic Bartholomew, those fights are solid. You know, another year and a half reign at 140. He way too big, for, he's too big for Garcia. Hey, hey, hey. Um possibly, but Garcia invited himself to this. He made he put that weight on. <laughs> you came to that man division. And you know, people are gonna want to know. Like you came up there and you won 12 rounds to none, just about. People are gonna want to know what you hey, I right, look. Look, that's that man division. I mean, when we say that man division, ain't nobody else in boxing we can sound confident saying about more than Terrence Crawford. That's that man division. Let's be clear here um, about Mikey Garcia. He came into that division for Broner because of the money. He didn't necessarily come in that division to entertain uh, a, a fight with Terrence Bud Crawford. I don't care what he may say. It's what it is. He don't want none of that, what we just saw. He doesn't. He just doesn't. As fans, should we demand it? We should. As fans, we should. I'm going to tell you why. Because I do. Because I Mikey do. Mikey Garcia, as far as I'm concerned, got a pass against you and his Gamboa. He didn't want that work. At one point, yep. Now, Forget granted, he was going through contractual saying. issues, but he didn't want that work. The reason but, I, I, the reason I push back a, a bit, Bo, because I still want to see him and Lenares at thirty-five. But yeah, I, and I know that. But my thing is, if he goes up for Adrian Broner, people are going to ask, why can't you go up for Terrence Bud Crawford? And that's the thing. Now, once you open that door, and I, I agree with Scorsese, you came in that man's division. Now, once you open that door then you can't be mad when people say, come on in. You, you, can't, you can't get mad no more when they say, come on in, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We've seen you up here once. Come on in. So, and it wasn't like he was small like Kel Brook. Just to add on, I don't want to veer off right. too long. But like Kel Brook, we know you too small for 160. You really skipped 154. This is a situation where we looked at Mike and we was like, damn, all right. You big and you strong. You all right. Yeah, so, you know, you right. can't, we need you to make the other good fights. Because that, I mean... If I'm Bud Crawford, right, and I, I think I said this on my show, I look down the list of guys at 140. Uh, Rancid Bartholomew, he washes him. Uh, who else? Rilke, well, like all, all the other guys, he washes. The only guy that you can look at and say that you would like to see him fight is Mikey Garcia because what we saw him do against Adrian Broner. And if Mikey can go up to 140 for Broner, he, people are going to say, and I have no problem with him saying it, that if you can do that for Broner, why can't you do that for Bud, Bud Crawford? So, yeah. uh, I go to you, Daniel. Uh, well, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll just say before I go to Daniel, it's fair for them to say it. <laughs> Let's be real here. And really study that fight and look at what Broner didn't do. Mm -hmm. Say it. <clears throat> that mean I see him beating him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, 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 first, Daniel, your thoughts on this, and then I'll go back to you, Bo, and give your, uh, your analysis of what went down. Yes. First, Daniel, unmute your mic, Daniel. All right. Now, we, when we talked about this on Thursday, I said, like, we don't – what made this fight interesting to me was that how much of an un unknown Ndongo was in all factors. Now we know that thanks to Bud that he does have a weak he does have a weak body. Because we have to remember he didn't not he did not knock him out with like a left hook to the liver like a la Hopkins to Oscar. 
He hit him right in the middle of the sternum and the abs. And Ndongo went timber. So that is impressive. And that is very impressive in a way. You now, like Scorsese said, you now have a champion in Crawford who has pretty much proven that he can knock down any guy that he fights with as long as he's a little bit of the weight class. The problem that's going to be, though, is he actually, when, when he did also benefit from Ndongo, trying a little bit too much to use his height and reach against Bud Crawford. Like, because uh, with another guy in EJ's hangout, he pointed out that he was taking big steps in a way just to have Bud not get the rhythm right as far as into it. But unfortunately, one of the things that you do when you do that, you also don't get your rhythm right for the other fighter. And that leaves you trying to reach out and trying to land a big shot at a range that you can get countered in, which is pretty much what Ndongo had, had to go through with Bud as far as body shots. Now, is impressive as a feat? Yeah, it is. As far as now, since the WBO got recognized as a legit sanctioning body by the International Boxing Hall of Fame, he's now legitimately the third guy to be an undisputed champion. First one being Hopkins, and the second one being Jermaine Taylor. Mm -hmm. Now, but we know history-wise, yeah, there's guys like Tyson, there's guys like Ali, Monson, that share that title. Because now that there's, instead of two or three belts, there's four. He's, undis he's now undisputed. You can't say anything about Buck Crawford at 140. You try to say anything about Buck Crawford at 140, you are smoking something mm -hmm. after tonight. Now, as far as the future, that's where it gets difficult. And that's where I do think that he'll probably wind up making the jump to welterweight after like one, uh, probably one defense of all four belts because the Mikey fight, as much as I want to see it, and trust me, like I do agree with a good guess of the wood that as fans, we should demand that fight because Mikey himself demanded that fight. When after that interview that he had after he beat Broner. There's the fact that, unfortunately, that we're also dealing with Bob Aaron and Richard Schaefer. <laughs> and, unfortunately, those two despise each other. So, realistically, to me, until something happens where both of them can break bread in peace, I don't see that fight happening anytime soon. Now, he can make a defense. Remember, he, does now, he now has an IBF mandatory lip nets. He can do that defense. Bartholomew, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Bartholomew, but then Bartholomew almost falls into the same circle with Schaefer. If it's not Schaefer, it's with Al Heyman. So, same thing I think with Relic. I think Relic is also a Heyman guy. That it makes it a difficult fight to make. So that's why I mean, as far as the business, well, I think as much as I know Scorsese, you don't want to see it, welterweight might be the move. And that way, that presents itself a different conundrum because all the top guys, except for Jeff Horn and Manny Pacquiao, are with Heyman. So he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. You can you can be at one forty. All the people that are remotely good that can challenge you, or that you could present yourself as a challenge, short of Sergey Lipnitz, are with are aligned with a guy that your promoter despises, and at welterweight. Pretty much almost all the champions are with the same guy that your promoter despises. So Bud's unfortunately stuck between a hard between a rock and a hard place, whichever way he goes. I wouldn't mind him staying in 140. Do just do what Hopkins did. Hopkins for 10 years took on all comers at middleweight. For 10 years. He didn't care. Vladimir Klitschko for close to 10 years. Did the same thing. Who's the mandatory? Fine, I'll fight him. So that may be what Bud maybe one would have to do. He maybe maybe that's gotta be the fight 
that they make next Sergei Lipnitz because we know how the IBF gets when it comes to their mandatories. So, um, but it's a good night overall. A good night overall. I'm glad for Lincoln. I'm glad for Lincoln, Nebraska. Even though I did say that in Dongo, I need to think. I said if in Dongo wanted some real heat with that crowd, he should have worn a Miami Hurricanes Bernie Kosar jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if this is who I think it is, um, one of the stars of the YTBC. Uh, one of my UK, I ain't a, uh, I ain't a star no YTBC man. Everyone hates my shit, bro. My UK bro, him. <laughs> um, I've been on his show in the past multiple times, making his first appearance on Power for Power Box Report. Wingy boxing, ladies and gentlemen. Wingy boxing. No, I've been on. Um, I've been on it before now. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, I don't shit. think so. I owe you, man. I'm sorry. Um, we do an instant analysis of Terrence Bud Crawford <coughs> topic over Julius and Dungo. You just did your show. Um, I know it's late morning. Um, your time. Six, six o'clock in the morning. I'm, sh- I'm shattered, brother. Uh, your breakdown. I just thought Crawford looked great. Did you see that? Yeah, I, th- I thought he looked great. I thought he looked great. Um, I think the interesting thing for me, I was interested to see how he'd negotiate around in Dongo's awkwardness that doesn't mean i think indongo was going to beat him i picked crawford for the late ko but i was interested to see just the way indongo bounces the way he moves those long arms the way he's a little bit tricky sometimes crawford because he likes to sort of like bang the gloves together so to speak and gets in there in the early rounds and really swing and sort of like show his sort of uh yeah, put his pride on the line i was just interested to see how the early rounds would be but he stayed cool he stayed calm uh, not what, what was that first knock? Was that second second round? That first knockdown, where he, uh, clipped on top of the head, and then uh, and Dongo goes down. I can't remember if it's the second round or not. Gets that knockdown, and then in the third round, lands that uh, beautiful body shot. That's how you unify. T- that's uh, that's how you unify the titles, man. I thought it was sweet. I thought it was great. Is that little piece of history we was all sitting through? And I'm very very happy for Crawford, man. He's the type of guy that you'd want to see get get that type of win. So yeah, it was great, man. It was great. Yeah, it was a little uh, uh, left hand uh, behind the ear. And I think hit the equilibrium of and down the right um, short, short, yeah. short circuit him in the second round. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, quickly, uh, Mike Money, your, your, your thoughts. Mike. Mike Money, unmute your mic. Can you hear us, Mike? <laughs> yeah, he, he may. Let's, he, uh, let's say Mike on mute. Yeah, he's on mute. He may have some technical issues. Um, move on to some further analysis. Um, discussion after the fight, they asked Terrence, they asked Terrence Crawford, uh, where does he stand in the pound for pound rankings? He said while he has great respect for Andre Ward, he's done it all, that with this performance, he, he thinks he may have um, over... Uh, Taking over his spot, his top spot, in the number one pound for pound rankings. Teddy Atlas said he still has Lomachenko. There's been much discussion now after this where Crawford now is undisputed, unified at all four belts. He may be number one right now. I want to have a little brief discussion right here and now, given what we just saw, given kind of the historic accomplished, the historic feats that uh, Bud Crawford. But Crawford just accomplished here, and I'll just open up for anybody who wants to respond. Um, is Terrence Crawford right now number one pound for pound fighter in the world? It's like I said when I opened up. I, I believe uh, it's hard not to put him there, and I think the main reason for me is this win. Um, just like Wiggy said, um, just like others have said, um, uh, and Dongo was uh, he made you curious because of what he brought to the table in terms of style and what he brings to the ring. But yeah. like I said, once once Bud was able to like outclass him too. And like I said, when you look at his road to get into Ndongo in this unified fight, this uh, fight for Undisputed, it's very hard not to put him because he is actually head and shoulders above the rest of his division. So much so, it's more than any other fighter in any other division. Like when you look at Andre Ward, for instance, who I had number one before tonight, Andre Ward, 
like, okay, he's the best fighter at 175, but like, I want to see you fight Stevenson. And what about Peter Beef? What about it? With Bud, there's no what about. Yeah, and he yeah, that's true. Everybody. So I mean, like, how do you really? It's kind of hard to say that he's not. On the flip side, when you look at um, just beating Kovalev twice and then being able to come back and stop Kovalev, and like, I don't think like Harley, nobody really seen that coming except for Andre Ward and Virgil themselves. I mean, that is big. And and when you consider that he did that in a year himself, I mean, he came back from a layoff and fought, what, two, three people? Only one of them was, like, legitimate at the weight class. He couldn't even get the right work to prepare himself. Um, the fight that he had before uh, before Sergey Kovalev, uh, what was that, Alexander Brand? That guy wasn't even a, a full-fledged, like, 175 guy. So you didn't even get the right road to him, and then you was able to go up and beat Kovalev twice? That was big, but... You don't stand head and shoulders above the rest of the division like Bud does. So it's, I can't really argue with you. I think, um, what, the, the brother, sorry, what's your name, brother? Daoud. Daoud. I think you make a great point because it's, when you think about it, as you said, it's almost, uh, it, it literally is undisputed because I was, I, was, I was thinking about who else at 140? Somebody asked me who, who at 140 would I like to see um, Crawford face now? Is there any sort of questions? There isn't. There, there, there's not. Like, I'm thinking, like, r- like Francis Barthelemy might be an interesting fight. Sergey Libinet might be an interesting fight. Uh, Amir Imam. But we all, we, we, there's no real question. We all know Crawford's going to beat those guys. It's more interesting for him to go up at 147. That's where the names are. So when you're talking about pound for pound at 140, as you said, you're right. It, it's not really a question. I don't really do the whole pound for pound thing. It's more personal sort of opinions. But Crawford has the more definitive. Uh, not right, but uh, uh, has a more solid argument to be placed yeah. as a pound for pound, oh, okay. possibly over Ward. If, if, if you let want me to ask say that. Let, me ask the question a, let me ask the question a different way, Wingy, uh, to you specifically. Uh, are you more impressed with Ward yeah. and what he's done over any other fighter out there? <laughs> wow, that's a really that's a really good question. Um, I, I've got to admit it, it's. Not, not everybody might like this. Nobody likes what I say, I don't know. But I was a little bit disappointed, isn't the word, in, 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 in the first uh, uh, ward Kovalev fight. I wanted to see Ward do something a little bit more definitive and take out Kovalev more cleanly. In the second fight, he did that, so I was happy. I, I can't, I, I'd say yes. I, I'd say yes. I, I am, I, because of the threat and the, the danger we know that Kovalev is, I would say I'm more impressed with what, what Ward's done. But there's also a really good argument for Crawford as well, because who at 140, n- nobody at 140 can... Uh, F, F with the brother. I don't want to come on your show. They can't it. take him as far, yeah. Yeah, sorry, they go They can't take him as far as... as, as ah, no problem, no problem. We use four letter make... words on this show all the time, and we need no problem. Okay, cool. No, uh, you know what? Uh, let me, for let me say this. Let me say this. First, let me give my... I, I never gave my analysis of the fight. And I, I understand because everybody's excited. Uh, Scorsese said something about uh, Ndongo giving up his height. What you saw, it wasn't that Ndongo gave up his height. Is Terrence Crawford didn't fall for the feints, the flinches. And when he came in, he stood his ground and was able to make that 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 half an inch turn with the shoulder because he was looking to counter. So every time Ndongo, right, so every time Ndongo jabbed and came at him, Crawford didn't go back. He stood his ground, stayed right there in the pocket. So it forced Ndongo to have to either stay there in the pocket a little second longer than he wanted to or step back because Crawford didn't give him no ground. So that's why when Ndongo would come, he was able to hit him with some of them counters because he was able to stand there, take a half-inch step left or a half-inch step right and still be within range of his of his ability to get off and stifling Ndongo's ability to try to fight at long range Thus, made it look like, yo, he's giving it up. It wasn't he was giving up. Crawford just wasn't giving room to him to allow him to, you know what I'm saying, to 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 to, to maintain his distance like he wanted to. And then Dongo would have to reset by stepping back, and that's where Craw- Crawford was dangerous at, and that's where he caught him at every time. But um, well, you guys, are t- t- here's the thing, and listen, the pound for pound is, is subjective, but this is the reason why. You can make an argument that Andre Ward fought another top pound-for-pound pound guy, and when you do that, you're supposed to struggle. 
It's supposed to start when you fight another pound for pound guy. Otherwise, what was the point of him being up there? And then on top of that, you can also make the argument where well, Ward, when he fought Kovalev, I think Dawu said it, he didn't fight the horses he needed to prepare him for Kovalev. So that's why the rematch fight was better. But if you look at the uh, way of not so much as ease, but if you look at the different levels that we saw Crawford apply to the type of opponents he did it to, he did it to Gamboa, he did this to Postal, he did this to uh, uh, um, Felix Diaz, yes. he yeah. did this to uh, 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 the, the, uh, uh, Julius Ndongo. If I look at that, and that run itself is more impressive than a Sullivan Barrera or, 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 or Kovala. And also, there is no, there is no more what-ifs for uh, Terrence Crawford. Like, you have a what-if out there for Andre Ward. Like, for whatever fucking reason, Ward is trying to act like Stevenson don't exist. That's, that's the most disrespectful shit I've ever seen. He's trying to act like this guy don't resist, exist. And he's being really fucking disrespectful by doing that, okay? Uh, Terrence Crawford didn't treat Ndongo like that. He went and said, okay, you got two titles, I want them, I want to be undisputed. So I, have to, I, I just have to look at that and say, from a history standpoint, from the fact of the path that you took to get there standpoint, and the way you did it with ease against guys that we kind of did, like, I had, I didn't know Felix D. I thought Felix Diaz would be a tough fight. He made an easy fight, so he showed us that level. I, we, we all, no, nobody saw this happening with him and Julius Ndongo. So you have to look at that and put it in the contest. And does that, in your opinion, outweigh Andre Ward's questionable wins? Because you have, some people feel like the first fight was questionable. And then there's a lot of people that could, you know what I'm saying, they have complaints about the low blows. But Terrence Crawford left no doubt about him being undisputed. And the path he got there, you left no doubt about how he got there. So I have to look at that, and in my eyes, yeah, I have to warrant that more than Andre Ward. And um, number one. I see Mike Money and hopefully his um, uh, technical issues are, uh, are fixed. I'll get you into this discussion, a quick, your quick breakdown of an, a, a Crawford's win over in Dungo, as well as um, getting to this discussion about Crawford and where is he amongst the best, pound for pound, amongst the best fighters in the world. Well, that, that's an automatic given. And first and foremost, um, thank you for having me on. Um, what I've been seeing the evolution of Crawford is this. He's been able to figure out fighters a lot earlier than, um, than previous fights. Sometimes it took him like four to five rounds to make these adjustments. Now he's making them first and second round. Uh, I mean, the left hand, it was just, you know, going to the body. And everyone's alluded to it. He's just a, he's just special. Now, in regards to the pound for pound, I wish I could do one A and one B between Ward and Crawford. Those, I think, after tonight, there is without no doubt, those are the top two boxes, pound for pound. Um, you're really, really driving at straws here. Um, it, I mean, it is tough, and everyone made salient points on both ends. For me, I'm just going to give the slight, I mean, it is ever so slight, the slight as the Andre Ward, and, and, and what's it called? Terrence Crawford is right behind him. He is, like, literally just right behind him. And if, it, and if this, um, and I've said this on Twitter tonight, I don't want it to marinate anymore. I think it's, the time is now for Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence He's going to move up to 147. He's probably going to take a fight at 147. And what Daniel said, we all know we all know the politics. Everyone's been hanging at 147. We all know this, but from I'm and I'm just a fan. From a fan's perspective, I don't want a repeat of um, Juan Ma and Salido letting it marinate and letting it marinate, and then Juan Ma takes a loss. I mean, I'm sorry, Juan Ma and Gamboa, and he takes a loss to Salido, and we never got to see that fight. I just want, you know, as a fan, the best fight and the best. Those are the top three fighters. To me, the top three fighters right now, Ward, Crawford, and Spence. And I really want to see Crawford and Spence. I want to see that next, but I know that's not going to happen. But Great fight. Great night of boxing. For, um, great night for boxing. We have a, an American superstar, and I wish they would do more things with him. 
I'm, cl- I'm glad you put emphasis on that. Uh, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to put emphasis on it before, we go- before I move on to Scorsese. Um, I'm going to go there. Um, not just an American superstar in the making, another American, African-American superstar in the making. And I just want to put emphasis on that for reason. And I hope people, and I hope the powers that be give him the push that he deserves. Mm. Following Floyd, the way they're not giving it to uh, Wilder for whatever reason, you can decide there. Mm. But this is the dude. This is the dude. If you want to talk about, this is, this, more than anybody right now, Terrence Crawford is the new face of American boxing. He deserves that distinction. He deserves that honor. He deserves that credit. And he deserves that push. And I'm just going to say that. In terms of who's the most impressive fighter or whatever, uh, pound for pound, I'm going to still go with Ward slightly. I just can't take away what he's done throughout the entirety of his career. Yeah, that's so, what, so, that's what, very quickly, Mark, that's what I was going to say. I was, I was let, uh, letting the other brother finish, but that's what I was going to say. Um, if, if, if you look at the sort of later part uh, uh, of, their res- of both guys' resumes, it's not massively impressive. But if you look at the later, if you look at the earlier part of the Super Six, he's got a lot of big names there. And Crawford, not to his fault, doesn't yet have that to add on to his argument for being pound for pound. That's why, if I would, in my opinion, sorry, Michael, carry on. Just, it's just had that in my head. Oh, no problem, no problem. I just can't, I just can't, I can't take that away. The longevity of what he's done. Um, but uh, Brother Dawood. Uh, uh, um, Bo, the arguments that you made are very strong and it's making me think, but I still want to give uh, um, Andre Ward uh, that distinction. I know who's not right now. Yeah, Loma me too. Loma Chico. Loma Chico. Me too. Me too. Damn well, I'm sorry, Teddy well, Atlas. I'm sorry, Teddy Atlas. I'm sorry, HBO. But no, I is nice one. though. He is nice though. He's got right, skills. He's got skills. I, mean, I, I think my I think my powerful power list would be more fucking controversial than that one. Like the people I got number one, two, three, four, they not on nobody list at all. But like, I mean, I don't respect the Lomachenko being there, but damn, like I mean I think Terrence Crawford, he he's sort of a gunslinger. Like I won't come into what Bo said. He said that um my boy wasn't giving his height up. He really was because you look at the knockout, you look at his back foot, the sign of his back foot lifting up off the floor. I got some feedback. I think my boys. Everybody, Mike, mute, everybody else mute your mics, please. Yeah, Mike, it's the Michael boys. It's coming up. Okay, it's good. All right, well, you look at your boy back foot when he got knocked out. He didn't shorten up his punches. He it really wasn't out just giving up height. He just wasn't. Judging range good at all. And Crawford, he took, like Bo said, he took that little step back. He saw the jab come out. And, you know, I think it's Southpaw, Southpaw at this time they fight. And he saw the jab come out. He pulled from the jab, took a look, took a little quarter step back to his right a little bit, got out the way of the straight left. And and you will look and see, Bud seen he was off balance. So he just talked up a power shot, the man foot clean off the ground. That's a telltale sign. You ain't going nowhere to let damn thing go back to the ground. You you can't do that. You gotta shoot your, <laughs> you gotta shoot your shot. You gotta be on balance. You can't even punch like that. Away. You can't even punch with your foot yeah. off the ground. Yeah, well, that's what that's what he said. No, no, I'm saying he 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 threw the one and then he threw the two and he he looked like a pitcher. His his leg had left the ground. So stuck I'm just out. saying to myself, say what? Now I'm saying he stuck out there because his foot's off the ground. Yeah, exactly, like, yeah, exactly. Saying. So that's what I, that's what I mean. Like his his height, he he gave up more than his height. He gave up his mobility, his height. He gave up everything, and Bud just Bud just broke him, man. So like when you see a guy doing stuff like that, and like I said, Kovalev be doing the same shit, and I didn't see. I, I, I won't say my pound for pound list because I want to keep this about what they try to make it about in the ring. Ward and um um. Uh, Crawford being number one, number two, jocking each other. But um, what I seen was, like I said, well, Andre Ward, I didn't see that uh, versus Kovalev. Andre Ward repeatedly from the orthodox stand saw that man throwing that right hand, and the best thing he would do is duck and throw a jab. Man, you got Crawford saying, I'm a gunslinger. I'm going to take a chance with my hook. get Because my boy was finna ratchet up a hook before he got knocked out. They was both ratcheting up a big hook. 
from what the lead hand, I believe. No, Crawford came with the uppercut from the left hand to the body, and I'm, and Dongo was getting his shit back, and he was coming back with a right. So it's like this gunslinger game work right here, and it's prime. And Ward just Ward ain't there no more. So if you talk about accomplishments, Andre Ward, but when you talk, I was making the argument earlier that. I think even Earl Spence do way more in the ring than Andre Ward do today. And that's what I believe the mark of you is today, what you're doing today. Not not exactly. Mm -hmm. We talk about your resume when you're gone. Mm -hmm. but, but the thing about it is you take your skills, what you are in that ring right now, and it ain't enough. All you're going to be is a resume because somebody going to whoop your ass and we're going to have to start talking about your resume. And I think Ward got hella close to that. As you see Crawford, man, shit, then I ain't even coming close, man. He's dope. You make one mistake and he going to, man, pound for pound power, moving up in weight, getting you gone. Crazy. I just think it's, uh, I think it's important to try and control the narrative because already I'm sort of seeing people saying, oh, Ndongo gave up his height. Was he, exp in the Sky Sports commentary, they even said Ndongo has been exposed that's unfair. I still think Ndongo is a good fighter. I still think he's tricky. Mm -hmm. His uh, movement will give many issues to a lot of fighters. Mm -hmm. I just simply think he went up against a guy who was significantly better than him in class. Yeah. It doesn't... Right. It, it, people are... Uh, they're, they're going to try and take away Crawford's win and it can't mm. be allowed to be done. The fact Ndongo got knocked out in three rounds is not because he got exposed. He got knocked out in three rounds because Crawford's that... I think oh, it's uh, flipping I, good. I, I think it did expose a little bit though, because you can't, you you can't. I mean, I, I mean, you could get away with, it, but to say I'm my feet off the ground and I'm saying I'm a world class, one of my feet off the ground, I'm saying I'm world class. Yo, that 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 people ain't gonna take that kindly. Like like we joke on Wilder technique. We gonna also say it about Indongo. Like I was having a more hype, more hope that the eyes was wrong, but the truth of the matter is they was right. Like they looked at Indongo, yeah, yeah, they see yeah, all the shortcomings, yeah. and we we wanted to believe the shortcomings weren't there for we could be entertained, but they was there. They they was there. Yeah, but 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 here's the thing: all fighters have flaws. All yeah. fighters have flaws. Right. I don't care who you yeah. are, and. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards Wingy's point here because we act like there's not space in this discussion for the fact that a good fighter, or even a, very, a good fighter, is just faced up with an elite fighter. Right. Right. That's I my issue when people have fight, that um, right. backseat driver hindsight 2020 perspective. They act like there's not space for, there's just certain levels of fighter here. You could be good, you could do all this stuff, but you just go up yeah. against a better fighter, period. And, and very, very, very good point. And the fact is that the fact Indongo does have those issues, yeah, his balance is a little bit off. Sometimes he overreaches. Sometimes he's a little bit, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Disjointed when he fights. But it's got him this far. And that is his style. As you said, not every fighter has to be technically precise to be successful in boxing. So it's not a case of, I mean, he obviously, yeah, he's got flaws. But those flaws have got him to this point. Ndongo is still a good fighter, regardless of his flaws. It's just that he faced Terence Crawford. They got, I mean, I even heard in um, against uh, Postol. People saying, oh, Crawford was running. Well, what did Crawford do in the last two effing rounds? I, I believe the he, he, he motion to say, all right, come on, let's fight. And he actually took it to him. So Crawford is not really going to be able to win no matter what. We know in some circles, no matter what happens, Crawford isn't going to be able to win. And I just don't want to see, I just don't want to see that taken away uh, uh, from Crawford. Do you understand what I mean? Karen, I, Michael, think, I think in terms of his flaws and Dongo, I think the thing reality is if he has the flaws, nobody nobody capitalized on him like we saw Terrence Crawford capitalize on him. Perfect, and yeah. the only way you can uh 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 the only way you can probably work on your flaws is you have to go against fighters that can kind of expose that so you can say, I gotta work on this. They said that at the end of the fight, there's levels. Terrence Crawford, if you look Gamboa, Victor Postal, uh Felix Diaz. Those were the levels that Crawford went through for whatever his flaws was and whatever he had to work on, he was able to work on it. Well, and Dongo, unfortunately, didn't go through that level where somebody, capital, somebody capitalized on his flaws to make him work on it. But that's not Terrence Crawford's fault at all, period. <laughs> so you, you can't blame Crawford for a style that Ndongo has used that, that got him here to the dance. And do we expect Ndongo to change what got him here? No, this, this is what got you here. You can't change it. But... The guy that, that you fought was able to show you, hey, dog, you're going to need more than this to beat me. And that's what really all it was tonight. 
I when mean, Milt, Milt McCrory had flaws in 85 when he fought Curry, and Curry destroyed him in two rounds. Does it take away from what Curry did? No. When Indongo goes, and I will, I do believe he'll pick up another belt, Crawford will go up, the belts will be um, uh, sort of all out there. It'll be mayhem, so to speak. When Indongo goes in there, picks up another belt, which I believe he will, probably has a couple of good defences, depending on where he's positioned. Then Crawford's win will probably get the respect it deserves because mm -hmm. Indongo's still going to be tricky, still going to be difficult. We're still all probably, well, not, not, I can't judge other people, but a lot of people I know are still probably going to sit and think, oh, uh, Indongo's probably going to lose this fight. And he'll probably go in there and beat the good person he goes up against. And when Crawford's up there at 147, we're just going to sit back and say, shit, Crawford was that good. Look, Indongo's looking good. That's what I feel. I think Indongo's going to win another title at some point. Let's, let's get Daniel into this discussion. I'll meet you, Mike Daniel. Oh, the pound, the, the dreaded pound for pound list. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll say this, it's a very, very good case for both. Because Crawford has a trump card saying, Andre Ward, I did something that you even weren't able to do in the Super 6. Granted, politics aside. Because, yeah, Andre Ward cleaned out super middleweight at under Super 6. But we all remember that Lucian Butte wasn't in the Super 6 at the time. Andre Ward right now has three belts. We know there's still one out there that does, that's right now resting with one of Donna Stevenson in Canada. But again, for the same reason that I said to Mikey Garcia and Bud most likely won't happen, we're probably not going to see Andre Ward try to fight, fight Stevenson for it. That's one thing. That, that's the main thing that Crawford has now of the war. Like, I can claim something that the last American that was able to claim it was Jermaine Taylor. I can say I was legitimately undisputed. And no, nobody has and neither the, the major mind leak of the IBO because Bud claimed that too tonight. Yeah. Like overall, like we, if we want to talk about the belts that somewhat matter, there are six <laughs> technically. Yeah, four major sanctioning bodies. It might wind up being five because the IBO is doing a pretty decent job of picking champions recently. And of course, the lineal title. He got God all has them all. all. Yeah, God has them all. Yeah. Yep. But. The main thing that Paulia would say that I would probably keep Andre Ward at number one is the fact, yeah, and the, and this is going to be Meredith's list. Andre Ward has not lost since he was a teenager. Yep, 12. Yeah, he was not even a teenager the last time that he lost. I even see. Lomachenko, the guy that Teddy Ellis puts in at number, at, put in at number one, he lost in the amateurs. Yes, granted, he avenged it twice. But even he lost in the amateurs. Andre Ward has not experienced loss as a teenager or as an adult in boxing. The only losses that he's taken is in the courtroom <laughs> when he tried to separate himself from Gary Shaw, from his promoter. Yeah, that's that's the only losses that he's experienced in the ring. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Almost mm -hmm. nothing. It was Goosey. It was Goosey. And Gary Shaw. Oh, Goosey. You, you Goosey. Right. My bad. You, you're right. My bad. Goosey. Goosey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Goosey. And that's the only guy that can legitimately say the boxing game that says, I beat, well, his estate can say, because the late Joe Goose and rest in peace. That he's the only guy in the boxing world that would claim, hey, I beat Andre Ward. So I still have to keep him up there. But what makes this subjective, and there's something that Wingy did bring up now. The unfortunate setup, and there's something that we have to mention. People did point this out. ESPN, for as little promotion as they did of this fight, they were able to point this out. That the biggest American who is an American draw in boxing, of course, after Floyd Mayweather, is Terrence Crawford. Is he? Because he's well, staying close right to there? home. Wait, wait, yeah, I don't know. Because, like, what's up? It, like, was Bud even on paper? Wasn't Bud last fight on pay-per-view? 
Yeah. No, that was the postal flight. His spot. The, post, the postal flight was on, on paper. No, 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 no. He's he's talking about the he's talking about the fight uh, Julio Diaz in April. Yeah. It was yeah, Felix Diaz. That was that was on pay per view. Yeah, nah, we gotta, post, we gotta post, check those because he did like 50k. I don't know if he's selling more. I real. think Danny Garcia may be. No, a no, little, Danny Garcia. No, well, we mean no, no. Jersey, all that. No, no, Danny we don't mean pay per view buys. We don't. We don't I'm mean pay per view buys. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not t- when I said that he is the face of American boxing now. He is the future, future American star of boxing. I'm not talking specific no. to pay per view. Uh, yeah, no, I I agree with the face part. I was talking. I was alluding to what the brother was saying about. Uh, financial, like, is he the biggest draw? Like, how's he the biggest draw? I don't know if that's true. I don't know if he's a live gate. Then because he's, he's, he's game, doing... yeah. okay, 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 okay. I was asking. I wasn't saying that to be smart. I really did. I just was no, no. Like, it's understandable. No, because that's yeah. the great knock. Unfortunately, yeah. at Bud, it's one of the great knocks. So you can have a Bud if you wanna, if you want to, like, have some hatering on him. You can be a smart ass and say, oh, he doesn't sell pay per views. Yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. a real tall, tall, powerful pounder. Well, he don't well I'm sorry. That's a bullshit yeah, well, argument. I'm sorry. It, it, and it is. Yeah. yeah. It is a bullshit argument. That's good. Good. It, is a bullshit. it is a bullshit argument, but unfortunately, it's also one of the consequences. Yeah, uh, This is a bad, the bad part about it. It's unfortunate the consequences of what Floyd did in making pay-per-view buys the barometer of your actual popularity. Yep. I can only hear people like Danny and Garcia and Keith Thurman saying some shit like that, though. I don't, I like, I don't, maybe, you know, maybe Mikey Garcia might say that, but I can't, like, I don't hear no, no, um, Spence being like, man, I ain't got to fight him. He don't bring nothing to the table. Or Sean Paul. No, we don't. No, they're not saying that. No we way. don't have to. Well, Tank, Tank just did it to Lomachenko. Yeah, Tank, Tank just, just did it to Lomachenko. He just said, oh, I can't fight Lomachenko. Floyd Lomachenko Mayo. only fills up 1,500. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd was in his ear telling him that. Floyd made that yeah. boy do that. He don't make no calls yet, bro. Yeah, I mean, twenty-two no years old. We talking about twenty-two I know, but, years but that's old the whole thing. To Danny Garcia. He's and, still and, continuing to poison that well. That's the thing. He's still continuing to poison the well, saying, "Look, no, no, you have to measure by my measurement. It's only paper device. No, it's not. I can't. Knock that. It's live gate. There's a reason why. Yeah, it's, it, there's a reason why Gennady Golovkin is as po- is as popular as he is, and why he's getting deals with Apple and such. Because yes. His two pay-per-views, they didn't exactly do great, but he makes a killing at the gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wherever he goes, he makes a killing yeah. at the gate. Here in New York, I think he broke the record for merchandise sales for a boxing event. I could see that. And that's yeah, and that's a guy without a natural attachment to New York. Yeah. So there's a different measurement that has to be holding to this, and that's that's when it isn't brought above. Because if you can do that and say like you're right behind Floyd in live gate revenue, and you can say the guy that draws that's an American after Floyd is Bud, that speaks very well to what first of all what Bud's team is doing. And second, to probably some people waking up to the fact that this whole dead ass argument that black fighters don't sell is, I'm sorry, it's bullshit. That was yeah. my next point, Dan. You know, yep. that. that was yep. my next point. That's, Not only yeah. that, and Bob yeah. Aram can build up fighters. He's good at that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm like not hearing that not so subtle undercode uh, racist argument. What's that? Yeah, like uh, I'm um, sorry, um, we're about, not we're not buying that. Like you, you can take you can take that mess. I'm not hearing that little coded yeah. racist argument. Yeah, yeah, we don't buy that. I'm I'm not, I'm not either. None of us are, and that's that's the good part of it. Like we understand that that's bullshit. Like you can you, you can take that little shit to the you can take that little shit to the UFC, or even in some ways, unfortunately, to the WWE. Right. But. Not in boxing, like real recognize real her game recognize game when it comes to boxing. Well, what I like, it doesn't really matter. Well, well, doesn't really, sorry, like, it doesn't really matter that you can that you're making big money. Real recognize real, like, and we know when things are not being done. Like I mentioned it before, I mentioned it long, like long before. My favorite fighter, Eric Morales, blatantly and knowingly ducked Juan Manuel Marquez. He, 
stuck them like he was the plague. Yeah. So I understand the game, but that's how it really got. You can recognize it. Now, uh, go ahead. He can top it by saying he's the first Mexican to beat Manny. So, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, like that, that, that whole situation was sticky because because Zaire Raheem beat Eric Morales, and then Manny Pacquiao ducked him and for Eric Morales when he was really supposed to fight Zaire. So that's a real sticky situation. When you get back to talking about that one, I don't feel sorry for nobody in it because all of them play funny roles and doing little funny stuff. Is what I'm trying to say. Indeed. Um. I want to talk quickly. We, we can go into um, Errol, not Errol, but um, uh, Bud vis-a-vis -vis welterweight in a second. But I want to put this out to you, fellas. When I've talked about Errol Spence, I've often said that once he wins the title, he's going to do damage in the welterweight division like Marvin Hagler did yeah. damage in the middleweight division. Given yeah. looking at Bud and the way he fights, the fact that he can go from orthodox to southpaw, the obvious mean streak. I mean, the way in, come on, man. The stare down, come on, bro. Even though I talk about Errol Spence in the context of Hagler, is Bud Crawford as a fighter a closest, the closest thing we've seen to a prime Marvin Hagler? I'll go to you first, Wingy. Yes, sir. Um, Errol Spence. Sorry, it's it's really late. Over, it's really it's late over it. But it's thing to Marvin Hagler. I've mentioned how Errol Spitz is going to rule the welterweight division once he finally yeah. wins the belt, like Hagler he finally won the belt. But what I'm asking is, when you look at Crawford and the way he fights, his ability to, to go orthodox to southpaw, all around fighter, head and body, can box outside, inside, punch, can take a decent shot, the mean streak. Is he the closest thing to a prime Marvin Hagler that we have right now? Well, the thing is for me, I try not to get, I don't like to, quite, whenever there's a good win like this or a big win, I often get overexcited and then start to, not overhype, but put too much on a fighter. Mm -hmm. But looking at, looking at Crawford, not, even, not just in this fight, even in, even in fights like the uh, Ricky Burns, his opponent, oh, the bald guy, I always forget his name. Oh, God, he got robbed by Ricky Burns. Uh, Beltram. Faced him. Oh, Beltram. Even in the Beltram fight, Beltram may not be the best of opponents, but just look at the way he was slipping those shots, the, the, the punches, whereas other people, Beltram is quite raw and rough, and other people can be tucked in the corner and take some shots. Even just the way he was slipping those sort of shots in the Beltram fight is something special. I mean... I'll say, I, I can't say Marvin Hagler at the moment or compare him to that. Yeah, I don't want to get overexcited. I've done that in the past. But he is definitely, seriously something special. With regards to the Errol Spence fight, I think you said that in my chat. With regards to the... Hold on. Excuse me. With regards to the Errol Spence fight, that is a great fight, a great matchup. Errol Spence is still a painful topic for me, don't forget. <laughs> okay. Respect, respect. I've still got... Respect for you. I've still that. got. I, I, I had to eat a lot of crow, uh, but he went in there. Uh, Brooke didn't. It wasn't a case of the eye. Earl Spence went in there and beat down on Brooke, and I had to accept that. <laughs> but with regards to the fighters facing each other, Crawford and Spence, that is a serious, serious super fight. I, 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 I've got to admit, I, I would edge to Crawford, but Spence fights in such. <sighs> To me, Spence is, uh, when I say unorthodox, I don't mean unorthodox, but Spence has got, he's almost like a, but he'll get in there, he'll scrap it up. Sometimes he can box at range. Sometimes he'll box intelligently, but he's always like, a, he's almost like more of a fighter to me. Whereas Crawford, he can fight, but he's a little bit more technically inclined his last two fights. It's a beautiful fight. I would edge to, Spe I, I would edge to uh, Crawford, but um, I'm right. not going to compare, um, Crawford to Hagler at this sort of stage. I, I, I need to see him a lot, a lot more. But I understand what you're saying, Michael. Yeah. Spence looks like a dude, that quiet, uh, soft, almost pretty looking dude. Not could just box you in the ring and beat you down. But if you mess with him in the street, he beat your ass down in the street fight, too. That's what yep. Spence is. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 
It's I too much for Bud right now in the day. It's too much any day almost, man. Yeah, it's too much, man. <laughs> it's, it's I shit. mean, Bud is and Bud like my he has the more skill displayed, but if them two get in the ring with each other, that's nah, a fight. I mean, I mean <laughs> that's 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 right. Right. yeah, I, I had to give the interspe spend Spence is yeah, Brooklyn, like Adonis, not a Adonis, but like a true Adonis, like just real big. Both of these dudes was big fighters. And you would just see Earl Spence like, oh, you hit me? Guess what? I'm stepping on the front foot eight times, and you're going to step backwards 12 times. And then and you just you just feel him at any point in time in your life, man. You feel this dude. And he not he not no low volume, slow footed. He come in with a strong jab where well, it's a right jab. If you think you're just going to counter over it, you're going to see that he's actually going to box you. He's going to change the level, and he's going to tear your gut up. And, and you're going to think, I'm going to hold him, I'm going to be cool. No, you're not going to hold him and be cool. He's going to rip out of that and he's going to beat you up. And you're going to say at some point, okay, I got to fight back. And that's the fucked up point you made. That's what he gonna you should have just, just survived the 12 rounds because uh, you're going to fight back and you're going to find yourself getting your ass beat. Look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not hyping the dude up. I've seen what he's doing. I love Terrence Crawford, the way he can box, the way he can move. The way Look, I said, man, this man's painting. I told a casual, I said, look, it's not gonna be the most exciting thing. <coughs> but some of the sights you some of the shots you see him land on Felix Diaz, watch the highlights and you're gonna be like, oh, what what did he just do? Virtuoso type shit. But Spence ain't worried about what you painting. He he worried about painting on your ass, and that's just yes. what it is, man. I, I'm telling you, he's a problem for in Sean Porter got the best shot. Sean Porter got the best shot. Once I see Sean Porter on the canvas, broke down Kenny throwing in the towel or some shit, then at that point, y'all just beg Earl Spence to leave that weight division and go find some real challenges because that man ain't about to, look. You picking Spence over Crawford, then, is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm yeah, picking Spence, man. I'll put it like this. Oh, yeah, no. no, 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 no that's, an easy one. that's an easy one. I'll put it like this. That's a very, very easy one. Yeah, like Spence this. right now over Crawford is yeah. an easy pick to make right now because the thing about it, we, have to do, we do have to agree. Bud... While starting out at welterweight, he reduced down himself to lightweight and then now going back up to junior, now went up to junior welterweight. Errol Spence will probably wind up at super middleweight at the end of his career. Yep, easily. He's that much bigger. He's that much bigger than Bud. And not to mention, we're going to have a rivalry because obviously it's going to be Texas versus Nebraska, Longhorns versus Cornhuskers. Yep. So there's going to be such a natural there, but there's something that Bud and in case you don't know where he's, he's talking that in the context of, of college football here in the States, so. Cool, 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 yeah. cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, the tricky part is also this. They both have that mean streak in them. It's different. The though. thing about it, unfortunately, though, is, is to me, and this is, goes back to the stare down that you mentioned, Mike, it's almost feeling like Bud needs that to really, really get going. Yeah. Spence doesn't need it. He just has it. <laughs> he just has that mean streak in you that he's just going to beat the living shit out of you when you step into the ring with him. Yeah, he gonna catch up That's what, and that, he going to catch up the butt, but ain't going to be able to withstand it, man. I see it every day. Yeah. Guys like him, that, guys like EJ that come with double jab, straight, right, uh, straight left hand to the body. And that's how they fight the first three rounds. Those kind of guys. For a guy like Bud, when that guy's naturally bigger than you, and he can catch up to you because he can catch up to Floyd and Broner. Don't worry about it. You going down? That ring. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry let's, about bring, it. let's bring let's bring Mike let's bring Mike Money in this. I'm unmute your mic, uh, brother. If you round Mike Money, unmute your mic. Yeah, Mike, unmute Mike. Yeah, I was the one who said it tonight. I, 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 the reason why I want to see it now is because, like I alluded to alluded to earlier, there have been too many fights that. We would wait to see, waited on to see happen, one to see happen through politics or through um, losses or things of that nature. We never got to see. We we all can name numerous fights over and over again. I might be in the minority in this one. Well, I probably am going to be in the minority in this one. But the Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, I want to see it now. Who do I edge? I've always been a I've always been a Terry uh, Bud Crawford guy, 
one thing that one thing that um it looks like Terrence Crawford's got away from. He always like to keep his hands down low, and I know that Errol Spence will pick him apart if he does that. And Terrence Crawford has done away with it. Sometimes he has his hands low, and a little of the defense is a little shaky. But he corrected that. Um, someone bigger than him going to the body. How could um Terrence Crawford? I think he could withstand that. It, it, to me, it, to me, it's a pick and fight. Uh, I go 50 50. I think it's a pick and fight right now. If it happens now, it'll be great. I know it's probably going to happen 2018, probably early 2019. I say, like I said, I'm in the minority. I think it's a 50 50 fight. Um, I'll say before I go to uh, Boas Gorsese, it's a fight I want to see much, uh, sooner rather than later. But I have to agree with a uh, 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 Daniel and Brother Dawood here. I have to go on with I have to go with Spence right now. Um, Spence, oh yeah, underrated boxer, underrated boxer. Um, the size, I think he has the chin um, to take the shots of Bud Crawford, and he has a he does the most with the least. If you can dig what I'm saying, he does the most with the least. He doesn't have to overexert himself to do the things. But he has a way of fighting where he doesn't have to do a lot to get things done. But he makes his fighter, he makes his opponent have to overexert themselves. You saw it in the Brook fight. Brook was competitive throughout, in my opinion. But you saw how much harder he had to work to get things done in there with Spence. Michael. You know, it's that factor. Go ahead, Wingy. I um the, the the thing is, it, it could be there's still the, the, the residues of the Kell Brook sort of fight still in my veins. Why I'm sort of leaning to Crawford, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But on a serious point, I understand what the brothers are saying. All make great points. Just to me, Terence Crawford has just got more options. I've obviously you guys know Errol Spence better than I do, but I've still watched all of his professional fights that have been televised. To me, Errol Spence. I just see him as more of a fighter. I think somebody mentioned it that Spence doesn't need to uh, be motivated to, to 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 fight and to scrap in the ring. That's what he's about. Somebody said that. Whereas me, for me, Crawford's got both options. You, you you've seen in fights where Crawford would be like, okay, let's have it, like the Gamboa fight. Yeah, let's fight. Let's do it. Uh, in the um, last rounds of the Postal fight. Yeah, okay, let's do it. But he can also fix Diaz fight. I thought it was going to go out there and scrap. But in the early rounds, he was putting the stick out, putting the stick out. He can box. I'm not saying Errol Spence can't box, but to me, Errol Spence is just a little bit more of a fight. And that's one option. Whereas Crawford is a fighter. And if he really wants to, like we saw in portions of the Postal fight, where he was on his toes, where people were saying he's running, he could even box, outbox uh, 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 an opponent as well. Whereas Spence, I just see as sort of one, not one dimensional, that's not the right word, but as a fighter, I just think Crawford's got more options. Yes, Spence is the bigger guy. Yes, Spence is the stronger guy, but stronger doesn't always equate to a win. Sometimes boxing technique and having more options in the toolbox can actually push your fight over. Not saying it's a definite win either way. Sorry, go on, Mike. In other words, uh, if I'm reading what you're saying, uh, you, you feel that the, 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 the flexibility, the diversification exactly. of, of a Crawford uh, yeah. could be the difference against a Spence who, at times, it looks like he fights kind of at one pace. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if you look at, like I said, I keep going back to the fight, the Postol fight. If you look at the Postol fight, in that fight, uh, uh, Crawford was on his toes. He was boxing, he was boxing, boxing, boxing. I, I may not, I mean, Errol Spence has shown he can do that. But in his recent fights, it's more just about getting in there, getting in, scrapping. Even in the Kell Brook fight in the early rounds, it was a fight. They were both scrapping. And as long as Crawford isn't dragged into that type of fight, which Spence may drag him into, if Crawford remains smart, makes it a, a, almost a boring fight and boxes, I just think he's got more options. That, but that's not guaranteeing a win. That's just my thoughts. Real yeah. fast, who brought well, up Marvin Hagler? Um, I did. Can I say one thing real fast about EJ? I'm not even a big Marvin Hagler fan. Like, Bo would tell you, like, I hate Marvin Hagler. But that's another discussion, right? One thing about Marvin Hagler that always stuck out to me was that, like, the, especially, in, like, in concerning the big four, because of his strength and power, he can force him to fight. EJ is like that. But the thing about it is he has the ability to box. They can't bring it out of him. Um, I know people 
Uh, I actually have a cousin that signed to Al Heyman. Been up on him when he's sparring, right? He says, EJ can move his head and all that. Like, a lot of people, you'll hear him say, like, the criticism of him, he don't move his head. He's there to get hit. Well, if I told you that, like, he keeps his hands at high guard and he does that to pressure you to make you fight so he can break you down, that's what he do. Now, I know that from the inside. I can't expect all fans to look at it the way I'm looking at it because insiders done told me this stuff. But, like, honestly, like, I'm not lying to y'all. Like, like I got this report from a couple people. Like, he do that shit on purpose. It's actually another level to it. That's the level that got him kicked out of Floyd's gym. It's a game plan. It's a mean game plan, it's a, bro. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like, it's like you, a, you know who you fight like You know who you fight yeah. When Kell Brook, when Kell Brook would line up the straight right hand at times, and I would hear people, he made Kell Brook land 31% of his punches. This is Kell Brook we're talking about. He would line up the straight right hand, and Earl would be on the outside of it like this. And I'm like, yo, y'all saying this man don't move his head. <laughs> He's moving laterally, moving his head, and I'm like, he doing, he's he's up in here like this. So when you open up and you thinking, oh, I'm gaining some confidence, the crowd's behind me, you about to get your ass broken. But he's not gonna have to do that to Terrence. I don't, I I think he's just gonna be able to find Terrence. I I mean, I respect Terrence Crawford so much, but I could easily be like, yo, we ain't going nine rounds in that fight unless Terrence Crawford do something that he has done already. And let's take power up in the weight division. He already was at 135 with crazy power, went up to 40, crazy power. If he take crazy power up to 47, he may stand a chance there. But I'm just going by how natural how natural the world is and saying, yo, he's not going to do that. Earl Spence ain't going to get hit by the hardest punch he's ever fought when he fought Terrence Crawford. I just don't think that's going to happen. Well, let me, let, 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 let me because he, he fought the amateurs bigger. He shrunk down. So he may be able to carry the yeah. power up. My problem is that because of uh, uh, Spence, based on what I've seen against the Brook fight, Brook is a big, big guy. Mm -hmm. He can yes. punch himself. And he took it all night long. Um, that strength, that chin, is, is put power on, on, on Spence to hurt him. That's my yes. question. Well, let, me, let, let me just make one point. <laughs> There's one thing I think everybody's forgetting about Earl Spence. Earl Spence... If you go back and you watch uh, tapes of like, um, I want to say guys like Sugar Ray Robinson or Charles Burley, Earl Spence closes the gap very, very quickly on you. When he's coming, he's not just a guy that's coming at you. Earl Spence can close that gap immediately and he can match you step for step, move for move. So if you slip, he can slip. If you slide, he can slide. And that's the reason why it looks like it's just pressuring you. No, Earl Spence is kind of mirroring what you're doing to keep you in within range of him to stay on the attack against you. Now, I think the, the, the biggest thing that, that I think we all have to remember is, now, I'm with my man, uh, 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 Michael, as far as I want to see the fight. But the reality is, after Golovkin and Gennady, Gennady Golovkin and Canelo, boxing will need another super fight. So that fight's not going to happen right away. They're going to put that off to maybe summer of 18 or summer of 2019 because boxing is going to need another super fight. And that's going to be our Marvin Hagler and uh, Tommy Hearns fight over again. But if you was to put them in the ring right now, because you're talking about two of the toughest mentally guys you've ever seen before, ever. Like they're, like Errol Spence was in a position to where even when Brooks was having success, he didn't let it bother him. And we know Bud Crawford is missing. So it's going to come down to a situation of in the trenches because eventually, because of Terrence, because of uh, Terrence Crawford moved, but at, at the same time, like I said, uh, Spence closes that gap so fast. And once he closed that gap, you're either forced to stand there or step back. And as you're going back, you get you in that corner, he's closing that gap on you, and you can't slip left or right because he can, like I said, he can match you step to step. So it's going to come down to who can land the big shot and hook the guy first. And if, it, and, and, and if I'm in, and if that's what I have to decide on, I think from a standpoint, Earl Spence is spars with 200 pounds. He plays spars with cruiserweights. Okay? <laughs> that's what he spars with. So if, if, if I'm looking at that, I have to go with the guy that I know that has, that has been hit and hasn't been bothered by it versus the guy that I just don't know at that if he goes up there to that weight and get tested like that to his body by a guy that attacks your body, can he stand up to it? That would be a deciding factor for me. That's like but Crawford, that's a, 
but Crawford might not necessarily allow uh, Errol to close the gap that easily. When, when, when you're making that example, it's a, it's a good example, but Crawford, I, I don't see Crawford standing there allowing Errol Spence to close the gap. That's what I'm saying. He's got more options. There's more tools in the box. If Crawford wants to move, make it a boring fight where people booing, I can just see Crawford doing that. He might even go in there and do that. We, when, we have, when we have two big punches or, uh, like this in a fight, a lot of the time we assume it's got to be KO at some point. How many times do we remember? Quite a few times. It's like, oh, I actually went 12 rounds. It, I could see that happening in this fight with Crawford possibly doing it on point. I, I don't think Errol Spence is going to necessarily easily close the gap. He's not going to stack uh, Crawford's not going to just allow him to do that. Uh, but it's, it's... Go on, Scorsese, bro. You got it. Go ahead. I thought you were done. Go ahead. No, no, yeah, I'm done. That's no, cool, guy. I thought, no, see, I'm just saying... when you speak about closing the gap, I think opponents have got there with Terrence Crawford. They just weren't able to stay there. They weren't able to make Terrence Crawford defend when they got there. Because the thing is, you got to bring out a counter in him. And then when you bring that out, you got to get away from it and counter him back and say, okay, are you still here? Are you still moving? If he's still moving, you got to redo this. Earl Spence has that redo that kind of thing about him where, where you said he could continuously close the gap and don't mind being that guy that's going to seek the hunt. Unlike Alexander Vizek today, when you talk about uh, like Alexander Vizek was tonight versus his opponent, he didn't ever want to step in and break that opponent high guard or that opponent defensive posture, whatever it may be. So if Crawford's going backwards, he's going backwards, and then he turns out Earl Spencer, that type of guy, he turns right away with you, and he's shooting a strong push. jab. He's push. shooting a strong, strong jab at you. Never getting, you never just getting an angle for nothing. Yeah. If you defensive, he gonna keep you defensive. Anytime I think in my mind when I think boxing, anytime you take an angle, you about seventy five percent defensive every time you do that. So when you do that, he gonna see it. And if you if you don't counter his jab, he gonna hit you with it, or he gonna shoot another one and try to do it again. And he gonna just keep mental pressure on you. So I don't think it's about it. It's not even a question to me. Can he get there on Terrence Crawford? It, it's really no. It's just like the question is. How many years would it take for me to see Terrence Crawford at welterweight to even feel comfortable if I'm the promoter to yeah. put my guy in with this he monster? Because it ain't fair. He, he has got that. Uh, people have got there on Terrence Crawford. I agree. I think I even said my, in, I can't remember, but I, I have said that in the past. Obviously, in the Gamboa fight early, we've seen it. But a lot of that, I believe, and this is some people may not like this, but I believe that Crawford, he's got that mean streak in him. Sometimes he likes to just stand there and have it out, uh, as we say over here in the UK, and fight. That's why I believe some opponents close that gap, as you say. I think when Crawford wants to, like in his Postol fight, which is so important to him, he was, I'm not saying, obviously, El, uh, Postol is, isn't Errol Spence. Errol uh. Spence is a different fighter. It's a different fighter. Uh. But what I'm saying is, when that gap has been closed, a lot of the time, I, that's, I just feel that's down to Crawford. Sometimes he's like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We, we know he's got that streak in him. A lot of people who don't really know Crawford say, oh, Crawford's quiet. Why doesn't he? We all know he's got that nasty mean streak in him. In yeah. that fight against that French dude, I forgot his name. But there was a real... That's the one, yeah. There he's is. got that streak in him. So that's yeah. why Did I you get what you was looking for? Some... Did you get what you yeah, was looking for when he said it at the end of the fight? Yeah, that's, it. That's, it. that's <laughs> it. that's it. That's it. That, 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 that's why I feel the gap gets closed. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes Crawford is not drawn into a fight, but he wants to, he wants to prove himself. If Crawford is smart in this Errol Spence fight, I, I don't think the gap will be that easily closed because. I was uh, wait, uh, can I say one thing? Go ahead. Go ahead. A very good point, though. You hold on. I just want to say, you listen. You make a very, very good point. No, I'm just saying he makes a very good point. He makes a good point. I'm just saying that what what you're. My only thing is what you're comparing what Crawford can do is against guys that, in my opinion, aren't the movers and pressuring you closing the gap as Earl Spence. That's that's all. But you make a very good point. Uh, we, yeah, we, we, we we talk Crawford. We talk uh, Crawford of uh, the uh, potential battle against Spence, uh, right. but we're going to talk Crawford vis-a-vis -vis the welterweight division. We should leave out Keith Thurman here, who has two belts. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people consider him the guy because he has two belts because he beat Garcia. But since, but since, and this is going to be the last question before we hang before we go because, like, like I said, Wiggy is late, early, early there. I know he's sleepy. I said I was going to be 10 minutes, but we start talking <laughs> boxing. And you, you, you guys know how it is, man. Can't go 10 minutes but, to but, Yeah, you know it, you know Bud Crawford in a potential... Bud Crawford... Yeah, Bud Crawford in a potential fight against Keith Thurman. What do you guys see? Wow, that's a fight. That's a fight. See, I like 
for some reason, people are go- going off Keith Thurman lately. They're like, oh, I don't think he's that good. It isn't that. It's a good fight. Um, I-, I-, I like it. I-, I can't make a pick at the moment. I think it's an interesting fight. I'll probably... I- I- no, I-, I can't. I can't. Scorsese, you go, bro. I'm a. Hey, I'm gonna say this, and let's keep Thurman power start showing up, and he he clip him and get that knockout. Keith Thurman ain't got half the technical skills of of Terence Crawford. To to my knowledge, I don't see it. When Keith Thurman is out there trying to force to move, he look it looks like I said forced. He's it's, it's square up type movement. It, to me, it just it just ain't hitting on what it need to be hitting on. And then when Sean Porter made him come forward, he wasn't coming forward with a tactical plan. He was coming forward with this. And I'm like, okay, you come for if 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 Porter can make you come on the front foot and you can't close the gap on him, you damn sure ain't finna do it on Bud. And if you do that to him, he's gonna hit you with long shots, just like you could be in Dongo Part Two. And I don't think I don't if, if you if you're not taking Danny Garcia power well, if you're not taking Danny Garcia power well, then I don't think you're gonna take uh, my boy uh, Crawford's either. So I think um, Danny might punch harder than you think. Yeah, he do, he do, he do. But 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 Keith Keith has Keith has shown numerous times hurt to the head, hurt to the body. Man, and some of these guys ain't really finishing and following up the way that Crawford would be capable right. of. So personally, I think I, I, my my pick would be Crawford decision, but I wouldn't be surprised by a Crawford stoppage neither, man. Well, the problem is the problem <clears throat> between a fight between those two. Would you be surprised? It's a different thing because no, no, but I but I think no, I wouldn't. But I don't think he would be like a. I think it would be a comeback type clipping. I don't think it'd be a dominant, nice performance. Uh, uh-huh. But Respect. yeah. Respect. Yeah, because we, we – well, it's probably due to the fact that he hasn't not done anybody in a bit. That's – like I said, we could kind of have that knock on Keith Thurman right now, but people keep forgetting that Keith Thurman does know how to box pretty well. <laughs> he does know how to move pretty well. It's just know. that – One okay, time, baby. Sean Porter and then Luis Colazo before – have it's revealed the fact that he doesn't like to get hit to the body. Yeah. And Bud would probably do that, especially in a southpaw stance. Now, the issue is going to be, though, with, like, between the him and fight between him and Keith. Like I said, Keith himself, like I said, it's more, it's just not, not, not <clears throat> sorry, naturally bigger. It's going to be a different type of fight because that may be actually be the fight that brings out the best in Keith Thurman. Yeah. Can we point. have somebody that is not going to be like a Sean Porter? Like, okay, I just have to out brawl you. Yes. No. Good point. Good point. Yeah. It's going to be a fight where, no, I have to not out brawl you. I have to out thank you. And I may have to out box you. That may actually be the fight that Keith Thurman needs. See, see, the thing about it is Keith Thurman can do all of that shit too. I'm sorry for letter word, but Keith Thurman. No, no problem. No problem. And I always call Keith Thurman, like I, I call Keith Thurman Keefy, right? Because I felt like every time you brought Earl Spence name up, he got funny. But if you brought anybody else name up, he was gung ho to get him in the ring, right? <laughs> he so don't I want none. Tease. Let's be let's be real about that. He don't want none. He don't want none. He don't want <laughs> yeah, none. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh listen. And I've been saying it for two, three years. Like I literally been saying it for a while, right? But I'm gonna be honest. The thing about Thurman is Thurman will try to knock you out, and when he can't, he just go to outboxing. That's what he do. So a lot of times we have a lot of criticisms of him, but, like, who was stopping Leonard Bundu until Earl Spence came? Nobody. You know what I'm saying? Can and I ask like, all you brothers? Huh? Sorry, Karen, bro. Sorry, Karen, Karen. No, the only thing I was saying was, like, you had to be careful with Keith Thurman because when Keith Thurman, usually a person that he can't outbox, he punch harder than you. And usually when he don't punch harder than you, he can outbox you. With Bud, I'll, I'm just curious as to how Bud takes punches from a guy like that. Because we looking at Keith as like sometime or whatever because he ain't knocked people out lately. But like Bud ain't been getting hit by no 147 punches that can punch. The- Keith Thurman's a, bo- a boxer puncher at 47 that can punch. So I don't know. I, this is a 50 <clears throat> fight. Can I just ask a question for all you guys on the panel? Um, my my uh, American brethren. Is there anybody at 147 or 154 that you think can beat Errol Spence? Because I know you guys are high on that. At 54, yeah. At 54, yeah. yeah. At 54, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at 54, yeah. But 
Okay, okay no, that's good. No, I respect that because you're not you're not over hyping. I was just curious. No, 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 no. Yeah, 50, 50, 54 is where I believe he'll take his first L unless yeah, he yeah. fights yeah, to Terrence Crawford. Charlo? Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the, well, no, Jamel has a good amount of skill, and he's now shown that with a, at least now with a new trainer that he can hit. Yeah, as yeah. good as he can get it now. They was Lubin just now for the Cal Brook fight. Yeah, uh, and now uh, let's think about it. Lubin, we have Eric. Well, yeah, you have Erickson Lubin coming up, and that kid is a problem too. Yeah, then you got her. You got Come- J Rock Williams. You got Jared Hurd. Uh, uh, one uh, one fifty four. You got Boo Boo. Um, Lara's still yeah, there. Yeah, you have Lara. Oh, this guy's there, no, man. No, 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 no. Take Lara off the goddamn fuck, Lara. Take him off. <laughs> <laughs> him off the table. Take him off the table right now. The reason he say that, Wiggy, is because of fight, fellow Cubano here, Bo. He, 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 he's a little bit mad at Lara right now. Uh, oh. Think about fighting um, um, the kid, Terrell Gosha. He's a little bit mad at that, so. I've, I've got a safe, bro. I've got to say, from the perspective over here from the UK, Jarrett Heard and that, very good, all very good. But the prospect that you guys got, me personally, I think Erickson Lubin is awesome. I just like his style. I like the way he presses the fight. It's intelligent with his aggression, but it's clean. I can't wait to see him in big fights. Tyler might be in trouble. Yeah, I I, I like Lubin a lot. I think he's great. I've said it. Like, uh, Wingy, I said it. If you put it, even now with Jarrett Heard having a belt, I think he. I him. said, if you, if yeah, if you, I said it. Even with now that Hurd's a champion, if you give me a fight between Jared Hurd and Erickson Lubin, I'm picking Erickson Lubin. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm sorry. Me too. Yeah. But yeah, well, uh, one thing I know about Hurd, um, 47, 47, even, even, even Crawford. I don't see him beating a fifty-four. That's where his problem's going to be. Okay. What about if my boy Ricky Burns gets that rematch with Crawford? What about what are we saying then, son? No, no, beat him, you want Ricky Burns to die, Wendy. You, you want Ricky Burns to die. <laughs> Don't get me. I'll put it like this, man. I just met you to disrespect you like that. Yeah, I'm saying. Don't get me <laughs> on your debut on Pound for Pound, bro. <laughs> right, I just met you. I'm going to disrespect you like that, bro. I'm sorry. I'm so- Michael knows how I get down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nah, I ain't He's just wrong. kidding. He's, He's kidding. Just about still. No, no, because then you have to bring – not not no, because now you're bringing back Ray Beltran, the anger that I had when they when they bullshitted him. Don't no, worry. Even us in the UK, side, we knew that we knew that was a robbery. Don't worry, we knew that was a robbery. Side, side, <laughs> side note, side note, uh, question, Wingy. I forgot the junior middleweight's name. He made his, his. I was on your show, and he made his debut, Olympian. Um, uh, junior middleweight on the under. What undercard, undercard was it? Uh, gosh, I can't remember his name. His name, uh, never mind. His name escapes me. But I was going to ask you. What's the thought over over there about him? But never mind, his name escapes me. So okay. flashy, flashy style, um, fights with a little bit, a lot of swag. Uh, uh, white what, uh, kid. black, black, black dude, white kid. Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head, mate. Sorry, it's really. Yeah, I I you know, you know, I know. Isn't Anthony Fowler? Fowler? No, I don't think so. No. Anthony Fowler. I can't well, he's, oh, um, oh, oh, I know, I know, I know. Um, um, oh, God, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's going to be fighting uh, against Frank Buglioni. The name's escaped me now. Uh, no, it's not. No, you said white kid, didn't you? You said a white kid. Yeah, white kid. Uh, flashy style. Oh, no, he made, no, no. He made no, no, no I, can't remember. Sorry, I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't Never remember. Mind. Um, but, yeah, go ahead, uh, Bo, the discussion about um, uh, Crawford and a potential fight with uh, Keith Thurman. Flute guy. Oh, you talking about me? Yeah. Yeah, both Dermot. Man, look. <laughs> I have reservations about Keithy, man. And I, I'm going to tell you what. Dude, I, I, I'm not going to say much because Keithy kind of makes me mad because he fights a big fight once and then we don't see him for the rest of the year and that just kind of pisses me the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and it does. It, 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 man. Yeah, it, it, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's almost as if he feels like okay, I want to fight, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna hold on to this belt because I mean he's acting like a guy whose days are numbered. That's what he's acting like. He's acting like a guy whose days are numbered. But um, so that that's that's what bugs me about him. And he has good reason. It just bugs me that, like, damn dog, every fucking time, like, really, 
Like shit. Oh, he did, but, they did it to him. He doing it back. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, my biggest problem with Keith is this is a guy that at a press conference told Polly, "Don't duck me, son." And <laughs> you know, this is a guy that said, "When I get there, you know what I'm saying? Y'all better worry about me. I'm coming." Well, yeah. you're there now, and you didn't went from being the hunter to being the hunted, and you acting kind of shady, bro. Sat right there with sat right there with Errol Spence after Spence told him he 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 murked him two years ago. He, he had nothing for him. Nothing. Wait, 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 Spence. No, wait, not only did Spence say he murked him, Spence after he got a title was like, Okay, I got a title. Where are you mouthy motherfuckers at? Well you yeah. mouthy motherfuckers because uh uh yeah, because remember, this is the same Keith Thurman that said I didn't beat three daddy boys' asses in a row. Well Spence is the daddy boy. Yep. Go get that ass. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, when it was yeah, there, but, you yep. the fight. I would like to see this. This is not to throw Keith under the wolf. Keith biggest um uh his Achilles heel is is the body shots. He he hates the body shot. But Keith, mm -hmm. I, I gotta give it to Keith. Even when he took a good body shot, he still continued to fuck fight and continue to fuck. Keith is the kind of guy that if you make him, if he if he knows he has to fight you, he'll fight you. Okay, that's why I'll say that if, if you make a fight, he'll fight you. But the problem is, I haven't seen them same kind of levels. Like, Earl Spence is leaving bodies in his way at, like, whether it's a D level or an A level. He's leaving bodies in his wake. Okay? It don't matter what level you are, he's leaving you in the dust. Keith, as he started moving up, he's had to depend more on his boxing style because he's not knocking guys out. And Keith gasses out around the seventh to eighth round. He has to take a round or two off. You don't want to take a round or two off against Earl Spence. You don't want to take a round or two off against Terrence Crawford. That's a dangerous fucking – that's three minutes of hell for you if you got to take rounds off with them guys. So, uh, Mike, Mike, Mike Money, your thoughts? Yeah, and I'm just thinking from Keith, from, from Keith Thurman, his, his injury, is he going to be 100% when he comes back? Now, not that I'm preparing, but when Andre Boyd with his right, with his right, with his right hand, his right arm, it took him a very long time. He had surgery after surgery, and he finally is healthy enough when he caught Kovalev with that right hand. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking from that perspective, where is he going to be 100% when he comes back? But as far as, and everyone alluded to it, that he doesn't like going to the body and things, um, things of that nature. I think the number one question that we've learned, um, that we've, we've asked tonight is this. Is Bud Crawford's chin at 147 with the bigger guys? Because yes, Keith Thurman is a bigger guy than Terrence Crawford, and how? And the question is, how could he take? Um, if, if he could take a punch at 147, how good? How really good is Terrence Crawford's chin? I still got Terrence Crawford beating him. I still got him beating him, not with ease, but I still haven't beaten him. But that for me, the question is when Terrence Crawford can move up, and that's what I was spend after Keith. Um, he thermal with anybody. Can he wow. one can his power and everyone said it, can his power translate and can he take a can his chin um, withstand all that heat at one forty seven? Um and I'll say this before we uh, um um sign off. Uh, for those who ask him what about Michael Garcia? What about uh, what about uh, Danny Garcia? I didn't mention him for a reason. You get the picture. Um <laughs> Here's the thing about a potential uh, Crawford uh, Thurman that even when Thurman is in boxing mode, he can still get hit. Uh, when he fought Garcia, Danny Garcia, Gar Danny is basically a pot shotter, and yet he was able to land whenever he really started to throw, particularly in the second half of the fight. Thurman boxed because he was getting hit with shots and didn't like some of those shots. Crawford can do the same thing, but he's more consistent with his punch output and he has a better jab. And he has a more diverse, he's more diverse with his punches. Garcia, Danny Garcia basically throws the same two, three punches in a fight, period. Uh, no real great uppercuts, uh, no angle punches. And he's right there. He moves basically one way in one speed. 
Crawford, could, to Whitney's point about Crawford earlier in our discussion about uh, Crawford and Spence, Crawford could do so many things in the ring, even against a Thurman who's more athletic and can move and whatnot. He's going to be able to hit Thurman. And I think he's going to be able to hit Thurman consistently because, like I said, even in boxing in mode, he's loose for his defense. And he's reckless. When he throws punches. He loops too much. Against someone with Crawford who can be disciplined, when he um, shows discipline, I just don't see it. Um, I just don't see it. I think Crawford uh, would beat Thurman. I don't know if he'd knock him out, but I think he'll beat him by a, a fairly comfortable decision. And I think we're going to end things um, on that note because uh, we went even a little bit longer than I thought. Go around the panel here, fellas. Um, starting with you, Brother Dawood. Uh, first time on the show. Uh, per- first time on Pound for Pound Boxing Report. Uh, for folks who want to uh, talk to Sweet Science or anything else, let let them know where they can hit you up. Oh, man, you can catch me uh, on Instagram, 22bay underscore boxing. Um, that's me and my son's page. And you can catch me on Facebook and Ring IQ Boxing. Ibn Daoud Al Rasul. Uh, I drop videos usually like once every three, four days, unless something happens, and then I drop them more frequently. But that's where I like to do my boxing talk. And um, other than that, you can catch me around USA Boxing on the circuit because I'm a coach and that's what I do. Okay, cool, cool. First of all, thanks for being on the show. And uh, um, Bo, just leave me his information because I want to have him back on Pound for Pound. Um, I believe making his debut on Pound for Pound, winging boxing. Uh, you're known all over the YTBC, uh, popular channel, very good channel. I listen to it a lot. I'm on your show quite often. For folks who want to talk boxing, for folks who want to talk gaming, let the folks know where they can find you. Yeah, just put in uh, Wingy Boxing on uh, in Google uh, and my YouTube will come up or put in Wingy Gaming, my gaming channel will come up. Thank you for having me on, Michael. Great discussion with the brothers here, all very knowledgeable. Uh, I'm trying to find out where, where all you guys are at on the YouTube and that. So, uh, yeah, I'll be listening out for your links. Thank you for having me on, Michael. Respect, man. Indeed, indeed. And hope to have you on again. Um, it's been a while since you've been out here. Mike Money, for folks who want to talk to Sweet Science or anything else, let the folks know whether they can hit you. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me tonight. I'm uh, going to talk boxing, battle rap, uh, politics, Mike Money 214 on Twitter. Once again, I, I learned a lot from you guys, from you brothers, and you're very astute about the game of boxing. Every time I'm on the show, I'm, I'm always, um, you know, gaining knowledge from all you brothers. But once again, you can follow me on Twitter, Mike Money 214 and hopefully I'll be back soon. And uh, for those who are regular listening to the show and regular guests, uh, Bo Daniel Scorsese, uh, because of my uh, work schedule, I will have another show um, Monday night, fellas, just putting it out there for you. Uh, going to you, Scorsese, for folks who want to talk to Sweet Science, Game of Thrones. Um, let the folks know where they can hit you up. Unmute your mic. You got your mic muted, Scorsese. Yeah, that Game of Thrones shit put a smile on my face. I'm probably about to put some episodes of that on right now, but... <laughs> Shit, that shit crazy, but yeah. Uh, y'all, y'all want to talk the sport? Uh, some of you know you can hit me up on Twitter at my low place, all uh, one word, my low place, and then my YouTube. I drop videos, low place hashtag MLPF, and you can just get at me there. Uh, Daniel from the Inscriber for folks who want to talk the sweet science, for folks who want to talk the NBA specifically, the Miami Heat. But for folks who want to check you out on Twitter, uh, uh, clapping back at TCOTS, um, let them know. <laughs> you can find me uh, on Twitter, Ruckus99, etc. Right for the Inscriber Digital Magazine. I'm on here with you, Mike, pound for pound. I have my own show. Probably going to do it on Tuesday with Joe and Francis for BoxingNews.com. We're definitely going to talk about this fight coming up. And I'll just say this. Like I said on Thursday. I will acknowledge the circus, at least the main event of the circus, but I'm not going to break down the circus because <laughs> there ain't nothing to break down. <laughs> oh, which, by the way, oh, I, I do have to give a shout out to Wingy. Nice. It's that Streets of Rage that I see in your Yeah, but uh, look, that, don't get me going on games or these brothers are never going to have me back on his podcast. I'm not saying nothing. Oh, otherwise, no, I'll, no. I'll be able to have Wingy, I got a Super Nintendo and a Sega. <laughs> don't get me going, please. I don't hey, want to do this it. podcast. I got, I got a ColecoVision 5200. Y'all, go, go on. Oh, oh shit. shit. Oh, my beautiful, my honey. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know, Bo, 
Um, Commodore 64. Those old console games. Those old console games. That's his thing. Hey, oh, Wingy. Wow. I, ain't I ain't playing games, Wingy. You see where I pulled that out uh, from? You oh, shit. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no, he did. I wasn't playing those. Look at You see that? That's Damn, that's look at that. Right there, Wingy. No, that's he did. Respect. Respect, that's, brother. That's, Respect, that's, brother. That right there, that's, that's Killer Instinct. That's Mario Kart, Wingy. Can't go nowhere so, brothers who got boxing knowledge as well as gaming, uh, man, yeah. it, Michael, da Michael, you gotta let me back on it, bro. You gotta da let me back on it, man. Da Look, da even da even me, me even me and Scorsese had a nice debate, man. We've spoke before on TBV, and it hasn't, you know. But see, we, we were civil, man. Brother oh. Dawood, <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta, I got an old, I got an old copy of Mario Kart right back here in the drawer, man. You 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 with me, right? We we here. We oh, here. Yeah, man. Oh yeah, yeah. I I oh yeah. My kids play with my Super Nintendo and my Sega. They got Xbox and all that. They can't. Just as long as people know, I didn't bring up the game in it. Wasn't me. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> no, I wasn't Wiggy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was the. Picture, I'll fully Wiggy. acknowledge that because. What you said, Daniel? Go ahead. I was sorry. No, what you say, Daniel? Go ahead. No, I said like, I fully. I said I fully acknowledge that I brought up gaming because I have a question I want to ask you when this gets <laughs> off. Okay. Cool. No problem. I'll stay on, bro. Uh, Brother Bo from Truth and Facts, um, brand new of Awakening Relations. For folks who want to talk to Sweet Science, uh, for folks who want to make talk music, because if you listen to the past few episodes, Pound for Pound Box Report, the opening music is an exclusive beat from Bo. Uh, for folks who want to uh, follow the adventures of you and your kids, for folks who want to um, talk the app game, because you are in the app business. Uh, let the folks know where they can hit you up. Oh, man. First, man, I want to say this was a great panel, man. I love being here. Um, and I, I just want to say that, uh, you know, to all y'all right there, I don't know if y'all remember, but remember back in the day when you had to take the game and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to do that. I got to do that. Yes, yes. Look, man, oh, I, still, I, 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 still, I, I still got to do with it with the, Mar with the Mario Kart. I still yep, I you know, uh, you know, I'm I'm not trying to tell my age, but like I said, Commodore 64, the the the, the two little the two little bars on your screen with the ball. Respect, boop, 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 boop. respect. <laughs> That's respect, how far back respect. I go, baby. With the video, I'm a video game head. Boxing is my second love. Video game it is. Oh shit! Right, that's it. I'm 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 muting my mic, man. Or this is gonna go left. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We get a lot of folks that share my. That share the, who share the podcast. A lot of those are, are, are gamers as well. So you're not alone. Cool. Yeah, you're not Thank alone. Thank you. For having, thanks for having me on, brother. Uh, uh, but uh, shout out to Mike first of all for putting this together, and shout out to you on your um, with your food stuff going on, man. That's that's big. I'd like to see you. Man, shout out to you. Uh, shout out to Gail. She couldn't be here tonight, but she got to fight. Uh, so you know, shout out to her. Uh, shout out to Jacob. But uh, man, you can follow me, and yes, there'll be some new videos. My daughter's in town; she's back, so there will be some new videos. And me and my daughter drop the skits. Watch that. But you can find <laughs> me talking boxing, uh, truth and facts about boxing, on uh, YouTube. Also, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at uh, truth underscore fact box one, and Twitter at capital T for truth underscore capital F for fact box one. And uh, wherever they talk in boxing, right here, you know, pound for pound, I do Daniel's show. Uh, Dawu, me and Dawu, we do a show called Ring. Uh, IQ Heads of Fire podcast, of course. Also, do the movement with my boys, 2K from Prodigy of Boxing. My That's all you can. Yep, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Shout, shout out to uh, my guys at Pep Talk UK, Seven Wolves, Angela Hepton, Ingram Jones, uh, Chantel Cameron, Marcus the Great. You know, all all them all them out the FCC boxing, all all them all my UK people. Well. Yeah, pick up Ingram, them. pick up Ingram, pick up Ingram. Yeah, all all of my UK peeps, I get down with. Shout out to Gus. He could <coughs> be. I, I wonder how much money he won. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Gus. <laughs> shout out to he probably won some of EJ's money. EJ man, man, on the man, listen, yeah. Gus, is, Gus is still celebrating um, Neri's win over Yamanaka. Oh wow. So, oh, man. oh man! Oh, you know he's spliffing, man. You know, you know he's visited. He's been gross at least a few times after that fight. And you know what? Man, props to. Uh, we should be grateful for Julius and Dongo. I wrote an article about that. And yes, I didn't sir. We should be grateful because Julius and Dongo did not make us wait. He wanted it just as bad as Crawford wanted it. So we should be grateful to him. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this conversation. 
And mad props to uh, uh, Terrence Crawford because Terrence Crawford is becoming the face uh, for us, for American boxing, and he don't have to be the bad guy to be that face. He, yes, he, good he point. Don't have to good go point. right. You don't have to be a bad guy. You don't have to play the villain to be that face. And he's making no excuses. So that's why guys like him and Earl Spence, that's why I say this all the time, I want these old motherfuckers to get their ass out the sport so <laughs> these new dudes can shine because we got new guys that really want it, and we're not going to find another Pacquiao. We're not going to find another Floyd with Floyd and Pacquiao and all the motherfuckers still around. So they need to go. So, oh, and uh, a quick shot. And I hate, you know what? I'm not even going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to kick a man when he's down, but Andre Ward did a good job. There was somebody missing. Yeah. Oh, you mean Mr. Sadly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell we you have to leave for Tyrese alone. Come on, I'll tell you, man. Mr. Stanley, uh, once we go out, uh, Wingy. But yeah, first of all, I want to thank all you brothers for coming on. It's a late hour uh, for those here in the States, early hour for uh, Wingy over in the UK. Um, if you want to talk boxing, if you want to talk music, if you want to talk fitness, and the um, online coaching site is on the Powerful Cow Boxing Report. You can check that out, online coaching. Um, if you want to talk anything boxing, music, fitness, and whatnot with me, uh, on Twitter, Brother JR, you know what it is, at Brother JR76. Um, if you want to talk all things Pound for Pound Box Report, P4P Boxing Report, WordPress.com is the link. Check the Riser page. You'll find um, links to our pages and channels on face on, on YouTube, Facebook, G+, Tumblr, Twitter. Also, where to listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, uh, Player FM at the request of Wingy, um, as well Stitcher Radio, as well as Mixed Cloud. Um, like I said, we're going to have another show Monday night, Monday night at our regular 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time format. And again, I want to thank everybody, thank all y'all for joining us for, for Brother Dawood, for Wingy Boxing, Scorsese, Mike Money, Daniel from The Inscriber, both from Truth and Facts About Boxing, special post-fight Crawford and Dongo episode, Powerful Pound Box Report. Everybody have a good evening. Good night. Peace.